Welcome, everybody. We appreciate you. I want to thank you for joining uh, myself and veteran coach Jesse Martin. I'm veteran coach Mike Smith. And I like to say, I like to tell my veterans, we're going to get right into what is a nexus and, you know, when you should use it. I like to say I was, uh, at the time, Jesse, I had been practicing over a decade easily, you know, maybe impending on 15 years or so before I understood the term nexus. Um, I knew I heard the word before, but not used in the capacity that we probably use it seven days a week at this at this point, if, you know, uh, in general. And so that's what we'll be talking about. What is a nexus? Right. What is a nexus well, letter? I'll be honest with you, Dr. Yeah, Mike. The first yeah. the first time I heard nexus, I had to look it up because I was thinking it was something from the Matrix or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I had never heard of Nexus before, except yeah. for maybe a soft drink they used to have called Nexus. Like, like, um, at a, I mean, we're talking the same. I'm literally like, what's that, right? And so, um, on its surface, what do you come to 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 realize um, when we just just start talk, talk to get into it? Uh, you know, what is a nexus? What is a nexus letter, right? The term nexus letter and medical opinion, independent medical opinion, um, are often used uh, as sims, meaning the same thing with one another. They mean the same thing, right? Uh, but when we look at the term nexus in the capacity that Jesse and I, you know, uh, talking about it, and from a disability perspective, we're looking at the, uh, the things that are needed that are three essential essential elements for any VA disability benefit to be service connected. And so one of those things are a medical diagnosis, right? You have to have up to date signs and symptoms, um, a medical disability in the uh, medical record that, that, you know, that happened to you on active duty, generally, generally speaking, right? You have to have current symptoms of the disability that negatively affect you, uh, your work life or social functioning, including the severity of those symptoms. And then you have to have a clear link or medical nexus, so medical nexus evidence, right? And that's between the diagnosed disability condition and the veteran's active duty military service. That'd be either the direct condition or how uh, the diagnosed condition is approximately due to or aggravated by a condition you already have, right? And an example of that, one condition and then another condition is if somebody's rated for a right knee and then over the years the left knee starts to give way or become bothersome because the right knee was overused being a nexus or connection as a medical opinion to say i believe the left knee is as a result of the already rated right knee is the general idea um did i miss anything on that jesse you think or no, I don't think so. But I bet we have a lot of veterans in this group right now asking themselves, do I need a nexus? You know, do I need it? Probably some of them are stroking their beard like I am right now. Mm -hmm. um, do I need it? So if you were diagnosed with something while on active duty, uh, whether you were Title 10 or Title 32 orders in the Guard or the Reserves, um, you might not need a nexus statement if it's in your military treatment records. But if you're not continuing to get that stuff documented, get to the doctor now because you need to have the long term signs and symptoms of those conditions documented. So mm -hmm. get to the doctor, get it in your medical records. And if you sign up for our services, share that information with your coach. And once you become that elite member, you'll get that one on one coaching session and that coach will help you determine if you need a nexus or not. Right. That, uh, excellent. And I appreciate you chiming in, uh, Jesse, the dovetail off of that. That's not everybody needs a nexus. This this is correct. And oftentimes you'll see that need arise if one was either maybe previously denied in a certain condition or, again, something arose uh, after service or some time after service more than a year out of your, your duty. There are instances where no nexus is needed um, and some of those conditions, uh, like we mentioned, that's where you want to maybe get with a coach. Are there presumptive things that, you know, one can look at that might not or don't require a nexus? And most often, uh, uh, you know, but that's where the strategy comes in just in general, no doubt about it. 
um, you know, it was just like you, you mentioned earlier, right knee, left knee, you know, for any of those secondary conditions you're trying to file for, that nexus is the most important document you're going to have because it's the cause and effect. It's that link that this causes this. So, you know, if you're trying to do something like migraine secondary to tinnitus, you need that nexus to essentially say it's your tinnitus that causes your migraines. This is a, a, a quick point that one of the blog, uh, VACI mentioned, said nexus setter did you know, is an evidence-based document, evidence-based document, right, prepared by a private medical professional that helps establish a link or a connection between the veteran's current disability and their active military service. So this is another thing uh, that often comes up, uh, Jesse, that sometimes veterans slash patients will get, hey, I've been going to the doctor's office, you know, for years for my knee. They should know that it's related to my service or my knee. So just to really hone in, getting health care is just one third of this process. That is the ongoing signs and symptoms. It's the way, way I say it. It's just a third. So you still need that. And that doesn't encompass uh a medical opinion. So if you go see somebody about a knee, right, they might uh, assess you and maybe you get an x-ray or a cream or a brace or medicine or referral, right? But what you don't get in the regular healthcare space is an opinion about how this knee is, you know, related to this other knee for these reasons that are clinically spelled out. Okay. And so that is the expectation of what a nexus letter is as an evidence-based document. So it's a document that, again, can ultimately be used to draw the opinion, uh, help with uh, claims process. Right. Got it. Got it. So if, if I was going to ask my own private care provider to write me a nexus, what are what are the, some of the elements they're looking for? What what should be in there? Yeah, so very. It's a very good, excellent question, and I, and I love it because we do sometimes see people that have had either private providers, external folks. We work with a veteran uh, vetted network company, Telemedica, separate than VACI. Uh, that that the folks can use. Not the only game in town either to to get this, but some things because it's you know impossible to share such information directly, Jesse, to your question. Um, oftentimes you might see a nexus letter or that document come um, with an understanding of uh, say the credentialing first of the provider that might be writing the opinion. In other words, if you got a, a, an opinion letter, you know, it can't come from somebody necessarily that's uncredentialed in a space. You know, you want an orthopedic specialty uh, individual, and it doesn't even have to be an MD per se. I'm sorry, MD per se. You want an a orthopedic, a knee specialist, you know, doing a knee. So it might say I'm a nurse practitioner or physician's assistant, private doctor to, you know, veteran, uh, you know, uh, in general. And so it'll have that credentialing in it. It'll state the obvious, generally speaking, uh, you know, my belief based on a thorough records review of said veteran that condition A is connected to condition B or as a result of or made worse by, right? So we would see the actual verbiage that says, yeah, I think this left knee got started because of the already rated right knee. I'm oversimplifying. Um, oftentimes, Jesse, with, with a big point, because veterans will have this question, what's the benefit of it? Well, you'll see and I'm about speaking for uh, a well-written one, maybe Telemedica as an example of how they might might come out. Um, journal articles sometimes. You'll see journal articles that have the clinical data or evidence quoted or referenced in the body of the letter because this is how you draw the conclusion that one is connected to two or A is connected to B um, just in, in general. And, and usually you'll see some kind of summation of that, that, that opinion. So usually criteria and credentialing, the stated opinion, any reference, um, you know, clinical journals as to why knees break down more, you know, when there's trauma, the opposite knee. Um, and and, and you, you tend to telemedica see uh, historical uh, context of when 
claims that you're claiming, like your own, if you got a Nexus letter, have been awarded in some fashion. So they really make it and shrink the path, try to make it easier for the VA to understand and see it your way, you know, when it comes to putting up the, these claims, you know, and, and having that, um, you know, be a claim process for your Nexus letter or independent medical opinion. Yeah. So they, they use VBA citations on Nexus letters? So, uh, yes, in effect. They will, uh, they have given, uh, you know, this, the citation number where you might see, you know, similarly at some point historically, a left knee was awarded to the right knee. And they, they can, when they do that, what you, that the idea behind the, the medical opinion piece, the nexus letter, is that if you're a void of that information, like you mentioned, Jesse, you didn't, you know, go enough times or, or it appeared later after active duty, um, is to, to, they leave it up to the veteran to prove it to the VA, so to speak. And so, so having a citation number where, again, a left knee was awarded similarly to this claim or several examples of that just makes it easier for the raider um, or even the examiner, um, more or less the raider, to, to understand or have them see it your way uh, is, is the thought process. Yes is the short answer. So what you're saying is that VBA citation basically says, hey, you did it for this veteran over here and you should take care of me, too. Yes. Yes. You know, yep. for you guys out there that don't have your military treatment records, exhaust all effort to get them. Exhaust all effort to get them. Um, they'll help you out in the long run. If you sign up with us, they're going to it's going to help your coach out in the long run. So get those records. Yeah. Yeah, get get it. And I think so. Jesse made two two points about not needing, um, and then there, there was you know, out of the end of active duty, they give you a year of presumptive uh, conditions that if you complained about them, they would look at that and weigh it too close to your your, your active duty time. Um, that's for veterans that say I didn't complain much, I didn't go to sick call, you know. The you know culturally just not a lot of complaining you know even sometimes post career right which is Brian Reese of uh, you know fearless leader you hear him say get your butt to the doctor right and so that is again one of the third thing three things that that we mentioned Jesse it sounds like at some point you know after his career complained effectively I call it complain effectively. Right. In, in you know, simple terms, maybe not so simple because used to be in tight lip. But if you got a headache, you can count them. Right. You know how severe they are. You can paint the picture or location as an example. If tinnitus is connected, ringing in the ears and, you know, sometimes that might be irritating to a person's headache or they might need a nexus to prove such a thing. Right. Well, if the word headache or migraine doesn't show up because you didn't complain, you know, to your doctor, private or VA, then a nexus can't be drawn. There's nothing to kind of draw it to as, as, as one of those things. And um, it sounds like Jesse. Well, I, need, I need that diagnosis. Up. I need that diagnosis and complaint history. That's what you're saying. I got you. I got see, you. See, it's exactly right. You've been great. A great co-host today, sir. Yeah, I've enjoyed it, Dr. Mike. Hey, you guys all have a great day. If you need help, please reach out to us. Please reach out to our organization, and you guys all have a great day. And uh, we appreciate you. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, look forward to the next one. Feel free to sign up for our classes, VACR1, um, for as many times as you need to. Uh, if you need a Nexus, we, we can actually help you there with Telemedica, vetted professionals. Um, get with your coach, sign up with myself or Coach Jesse. He'll take good care of you. Anything you need, find us here.